idea what it could be, Steve? No, that's what we're going to find out. Give me some onions, will you, Sally? The way Dan's piling them on, I'm going to have to eat some in self-defense. How long do you expect to be gone? Three or four days, if the spooks don't get us. Don't you think you ought to notify the AEC, Steve? No, not till we find out first. Mm, curiosity. I know, kills cats. We've got 18 lives between us. <laughs> and no more hamburgers. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. You're watching PNT. I'm your host, wondering why I have to take the red or blue pill when all I really want is a pre-roll. Up front this week, according to an article by LiveScience.com, Washington may soon become the first state to allow a much more environmentally, if slightly ghoulish, form of burial. On April 19th, the Washington State Legislature passed a bill that will allow the bereaved to choose a new option rather than the usual cremation or burial, human composting. Also known as natural organic reduction, the process is essentially the same as what occurs when your garden waste is broken down into nice, clean, fertile soil. Human composting, however, accelerates the natural process of decomposition, rendering a human body into soft, loamy soil in about four weeks. Supporters of the practice claim that it is a far more environmentally friendly process than traditional methods, doing away with the need for the toxic chemicals used in embalming and eliminating the carbon and mercury emissions caused by cremation. Proponents of the technique also claim that it provides an alternative for those who feel standard services are far too detached, clinical, and cold, lacking any warmth of feeling or closure that many are looking for. For those curious, the end product is indistinguishable from normal composted material and is safe for the growing of flowers, fruits, and vegetables, with one human being producing roughly one cubic yard of compost. This actually proves a benefit to the bereaved, as the remains are no longer classified as such, allowing families to place the soil in their gardens or to scatter it on public lands. For PNT's part, while we salute this holistic and far more natural method of corpse disposal, we cannot help but note a certain irony that even after death, you can still have your loved ones for dinner. From ghouls in the garden to terrapin troops, our next story in our weekly roundup of the weird takes us to Florida, where one man seems to have taken a page from mad scientists everywhere. Thomas Devaney Lane, a resident of Brevard County, was taken into custody by the Indian Atlantic Police Department after they received reports that Lane was screaming obscenities and threatening to destroy everyone with an army of turtles. Receiving at least seven calls regarding the alleged tortoise terrorist, police investigated and tracked down Lane at a 7-Eleven where he had phoned the police department to threaten the dispatcher with his army of turtles, stating that, You'll all be sorry you with the saint. Apparently considering himself a prophet and leader to the Leatherbacks, Lane was forcibly removed from his car and arrested after stating that his turtle army would destroy everyone in an hour. Lane is currently incarcerated in Brevard County, facing multiple charges, including disturbing the peace, misuse of 911, and resisting an officer. For PNT's part, while we are relieved that the saint was taken into custody before his dastardly plan was due to take effect, we cannot help but mourn the chance to witness the terror and majesty that would have been the Great Turtle Wars. We'll be back with the final part of our program in just a few minutes. But first, a word from our sponsors. Hi, kids. Look at some delicious magic with the extra good chocolate-flavored syrup, Bosco. Bosco also makes milk chocolatey delicious. 
Tell mom to get Bosco chocolate-flavored syrup for you. Sing out. I love Bosco. It's rich in chocolate tea. Chocolate-flavored Bosco is mighty good for me. Mama puts it in my milk for extra energy. Bosco gives me iron and sunshine vitamin D. Oh, I love Bosco. That's the drink for me. Welcome back. And remember, for rich, chocolatey flavor, Bosco is the best. For the final part of our weekly roundup of the weird, BNT is pleased to bring you a startling UFO sighting uploaded to YouTube. Taken on April 9th in Wales and uploaded to YouTube channel The Borg Collective, this remarkably clear video was shot in 4K and appears to show a brilliantly lit triangular craft hovering in the skies over Linelli. Let's have a look at the footage.
So what was the object filmed hovering and moving over the Welsh countryside earlier this month? Let's run down the possibilities. As usual, birds, clouds, meteors, and flares are out. Drones? Possible. The fact that there are no identifying background items in order to help us determine the size, direction, and altitude of the object does not make analysis easy. So, while we have no real idea of the size of the object, we can cautiously rule out drones from the lack of noise on the audio track. At least, the noise a drone makes, very loud and high-pitched. So, while a drone could be a viable possibility, it's just not the best one. Commercial aircraft, including small planes, do not seem a likely cause. Most could not hover in place the way the object here seems to. The same restriction would apply to most military planes. Airplanes outside the enormously noisy Harrier jet do not hover in place for prolonged periods. But there are aircraft, both civilian and military, that do. Helicopters, in this case, military helicopters. First, PNT must make note of the fact that the footage is taken in 4K resolution, extremely high and detailed, and a far cry from the usual potato cam footage we generally have to work with. This clarity, despite the dark surroundings, allowed us to pick out details of the craft that would have been otherwise hidden. This proved vital to our assessment of the UFO. In going over the footage, at first it appears to be a triangular craft, similar to descriptions of the TR-3B. But something didn't look quite right to our eyes, and we finally found out precisely what it was. Our first clue was this area, obviously lighter than the others, and shaped like what appeared to be a cockpit of some kind. Additionally, the area directly above the largest flashing red light seemed out of place to us. Was this light reflecting off the hull of the unknown craft, or was it something else? At first we couldn't tell, so we moved on to the lights themselves. Whenever PNT looks at footage, one of the first telltale signs we look for that indicates that a UFO is in fact a terrestrial aircraft is the presence of any blinking lights especially red and green lights. Red and green lights are part of the vehicle identification system that is required on all aircraft. Placed on the wingtips of the craft, the lights signal the two sides, right and left. Other commonly placed lights are landing lights and tail lights, which can be white or red in color. For the landing lights, generally white. For tail lights, red. Following this line of reason, PNT attempted to match the light pattern seen in the footage to any known aircraft light patterns. While we did find similarities in several aircraft, none were an exact match, and the required green running light was clearly not visible. Momentarily stymied in our search, PNT turned our attention back to the cockpit and the strange reflection. After closely looking at the reflection, we suddenly realized that we were not looking at the hull of the craft, but instead the reflection of the blinking red light off a rotating blade, the ultimate telltale evidence of a helicopter. That led us to re-examine the cockpit area in relation to the lights, and suddenly we found that we were not looking at a triangular craft from the bottom or side, but instead a military helicopter seen from head-on. Once our brains readjusted to the changed angle, it was easy to make out the shape of the helicopter. In fact, we were surprised that we hadn't seen it before. But just for final confirmation, we turned back to the lights, and found that they were a dead-on match for the light patterns on helicopters, be they commercial, military, or private. This did reveal one discrepancy, however. While all of the other lights are in the proper position and color on the object, there is no green indicator to be seen anywhere on the craft. Instead, we see an odd cluster of smaller red lights, 
which would lead one to believe that this might have been a military exercise or other operation that required a stealth configuration, or that this particular craft's light had burned out and had somehow not been replaced, which goes against the required checklist of any aircraft before it even takes flight. The final bit of evidence for the helicopter explanation is the noise present on the audio track of the recording. While muffled, the noise is easily picked out under analysis, and matches that of a military helicopter known as the Apache, a multi-purpose craft that boasts a stealth hover mode designed to quiet the sound made by the rotating blades. The presence of military bases not far from the area also gives more credence to our identification. But even with these facts, there is still room for doubt. Why were the proper light requirements ignored? The question also remains as to why a military helicopter would be in stealth mode, conducting a nighttime surveillance mission at 2 a.m. over a small Welsh city. Any way you slice it, this seems a bit odd. But what if these lights were in fact something else? Something beyond our understanding. Is it possible that what we are seeing here is in fact a TR-3B, or perhaps a similar craft with another worldly origin? Could the various world governments have back-engineered extraterrestrial technology in order to further their own interests? Where would they have obtained such technology? Was it recovered from craft that were shot down by a fearful military-industrial complex, or a more interesting and chilling possibility. What if the technology that these purported black triangles employ was not recovered, but gifted? Is it possible that our world leaders cut a deal with an alien civilization in return for technology? What then was the price they were willing to pay for leapfrogging mankind's technology from vacuum tubes to integrated circuits in less than 20 years? Was it simply a trade of information? Perhaps resources that are scarce there, but common here. And what exactly would those resources be? Rare minerals? Water? Or perhaps food? Which leads us to the uncomfortable question. What food exactly? Could we already have the chilling answer in the numerous reports of cattle mutilations? Reports that began in the early 1970s and continue to this day. And the even darker and more sensational claims that the mutilations are not limited to animals, but include humans as well. Chilling food for thought. But whether or not the odd craft filmed earlier this month hovering over Lanelli, Wales, was a hoax, a misidentified but common military helicopter on night maneuvers of a strange nature, or something else entirely, we'll leave up to you to decide. Sound off in the comment section below with your thoughts. That's it for this time, faithful viewers. Be sure to click like, share, subscribe, and hit the bell icon to be notified when PNT presents your next portion of the paranormal. I'm your host, reminding you to keep an open mind, because a closed one shuts out the truth. <laughs>